Shalom, brethren, Yahshua, the Messiah. Um, I just want to talk to you briefly about um, vocation. Um, now, from Mark 10 and Matthew 19, 17, the Messiah states to the young man, If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. And also in Mark 10:17. And when he was gone forth out of the way, he came running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Joshua said to him, Why callest me good? There is none good but one, and that is Elohim. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, and so on. And he goes through the, the basis of the commandments, and he says to him, Master, I have kept all these things from my youth. And then Joshua says, uh, it says, Beholding him, he loved him and says to him, One thing thou lack, go and sell whatever you have to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take up the cross and follow me. Um, so this saying, um, obviously uh, the young man didn't uh, take up the Messiah's um, request of him at that point. Um, but to start off, uh, obviously, um, Matthew 19:17 it says to enter into life to keep the commandments, and I just don't hear that message at all uh, from any of the preachers today, which I just find so strange, you know, because uh, you know people try to twist um, Paul's writings, as it says in Peter, uh, to mean different things, and all really Paul was saying was that uh, the Messiah truly kept the commands. Uh, for us, it's not so that we don't need to it's so that we can have faith in the Messiah and keep them as he did and as that young man did but there is more of us that are, are, are required of just keeping the commandments because it's got to be a relationship as well um, with the Messiah and this, at this point uh, the boy kind of knew um, God probably knew that uh, this man standing before him was was not only a prophet of Elohim, but um, probably wasn't revealed to him that he was the son of Elohim yet. Um, but um, he just didn't want to enter into a relationship with him at that point. And to enter into a working relationship with the Messiah, the Messiah states, and um, remember he left all his possessions before he started his ministry, and so did the apostles. So uh, I just wonder how many people with valid ministries, how many people have valid ministries out there in churchianity land who have truly um, given everything they have to the poor before they've started their ministry. Um, just as, you know, one or two examples, uh, I believe, I'm not sure, but I think um, Brother Boxing, who who is a convert, a Sikh convert from India, um, I believe that, that perhaps he left all his possessions and whenever you do that Yahweh does um, honour that and um, you know he was like a great um, apostle um, you know last century and opened to many congregations not only in India but around the world um, and had a what was called a vocation bible school um, every year around the feast of tabernacles um, so they, they did try to keep the commandments but also entering into relationship, working relationship with the Messiah, um, we must start knowing the commandments and keeping the commandments, and then being immersed in His name, and then um, doing what's required of is giving everything we have to the poor. Now, uh, obviously, at this point, we don't know if the young man um, obeyed that or not. He could have done that later on in his life, you know, when the Messiah was resurrected and. You know the gospel was preached, saying that uh, when when the apostles preached um, the the words, saying that um, you know you've crucified your, your your Messiah, your King, the King of Israel, and then there's so many thousand people that that, that were cut to the heart, and then they were immersed and baptized and given the Holy Spirit, and then they discover really that was Yah's plan anyway to bring people into fellowship with Him because He did have to send His Son to die, not only for Israel to be born again in, in the Spirit. But also for any Gentiles to be um, to be circumcised in their heart as well. Remember, the Jews were circumcised in the flesh, but also the requirement in Deuteronomy tells us that they also have to be circumcised in the heart. 
Um, so this is about entering into a relationship with Yahweh Elohim. And, uh, you know, it's very important for us to know as believers, um, as it states in Revelation 14 and Revelation 7, it states that the name of the Father and the Son were written on the foreheads of the 144,000, as well as any called out ones um, from the nations, um, also in Revelation 7. And also the Sabbath is, is a, as an ongoing sign for all generations. So that's part of keeping the commandments. And I just don't hear um, that word being preached today at all. And it doesn't matter how good you think your church is, or you know if it's um, uh, you know a Gregorian calendar keeping congregations that usually keep the Roman feasts instead of you know the biblical feasts that are required of us. They're called Sabbaths, plural, and that's part of the fourth commandment. Um, another thing I, I would just like to bring to attention is um, the fact that there seems to be many uh, Luciferians in, in the churches today. Um, they seem to be deceiving the masses, masquerading as uh, ministers of light, when in fact they're not ministers of light, they're ministers of darkness. And they're the very ministers that take Paul's writings out of context and try to tell people you do not need to keep the commandments to be saved, but this is the very opposite of what the Messiah and the Apostles taught. They, they taught it, um, you know, they taught the, the commandments as an ongoing thing, and yet it's really up to us, um, you know, to take up the cross if we want to have a working relationship with the Messiah. But we, we, we come out of the shadow of, you know, the, the holy days, and then when we, we take up our cross, we realise that uh, the fulfilment of these shadow pictures as Paul writes is the sustenance of Yahshua the Messiah and then he comes and lives within us and yet and then you know we find ourselves that we don't contradict the commandments because we've already had good training and we've already had good grounding in them beforehand so the Luciferians really um, you know try to um, outshine um, this, this basic message of the Torah um, by looking good, sounding good by preaching a prosperity gospel, um, you know, by offering all kinds of uh, different things in life, um, masquerading as they say as angels and ministers of light, uh, when in fact they're, they're really preaching darkness and they're really taking the people away from uh, keeping the commandments, because it, it states in I think it's Malachi or one of the lesser prophets that uh, it's it's not it's not ro robbing Elohim isn't giving them money. Yahweh does not need money. What he requires of his people is obedience. Okay, and remember, it's it's obedience that is um, more important than sacrifice. Uh, the Messiah says, or I think it's mercy or obedience that's more important than sacrifice or or giving money or you know anything like that. Um, but you know, there's certain things that that's required of us at certain points in our walk with Elohim. And um, you know we we just thank him that he's so merciful and patient uh, with us. But you know I would recommend to any of you out there that are preaching the gospel, um, you better be preaching the commandments. You better be preaching the Messiah as the fulfilment of the holy days. And as he also said, he did not come to do away with uh, the law or the prophets. He came to fulfil them. And it doesn't mean to say that they're done away. Um, it's a different meaning entirely. It means that they're fulfilled, and we should live in the shadow of them for a while until the Messiah calls us out and tells us to take up our cross and follow him and therefore we got to give everything that we have away um, to to uh, you know the less fortunate people so that they can also pre uh, praise God um, as well so that's just something for you to think about and uh, obviously just watch out for the Luciferians obviously that masquerade as angels of light and yet they're preaching darkness into the body and many souls are being lost because they are throwing the commandments out and as the psalmist writes um, he who rejects the Torah even his prayers are an abomination so if you want God to start listening to you in your prayers if you want to have a better prayer life have more shalom in your life you better um, start um, wanting to please your father by keeping his commandments and then seeking a relationship with him um, in the name of Jesus Christ, or in fact in the name of, truly in the name of his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. So may Yah bless you at this time. 
and teach you by his spirit to keep his commandments. Shalom.